Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Chad from The Right Line. Today we're talking about Jeep drive shafts. I keep hearing a lot of varying opinions on these drive shafts. I have some of my own and if you want to hear what they are, stay tuned. So we're going to get started on the front drive shaft. I wanted to point out a few things about these drive shafts. These are Rezeppa style drive shafts. They use a CV style joint just like this one at the differential um, and at the transfer case for the rear. On the front, they use a non-serviceable solid U-joint. It's actually staked in place. I think you can see those stake marks in there. So um, they're non-serviceable. They uh, uh, I believe it's a 1310 joint. This is the front differential side, and this is the transfer case side double card right here. They do have a slip yoke and a boot, so this drive shaft will telescope and move as the suspension of your vehicle is articulating. These drive shafts are balanced. You can see there's a weight there and there's a weight there and um, the overall wall thickness of this this um, drive shaft really isn't um, all that thick necessarily but uh, aside from taking a solid hit uh, to the side of this drive shaft they're they're actually not that bad for what they are um, if you have a factory jeep then this is uh, not a bad drive shaft to have actually as i recall the lift limit for these sort of joints is like three inches and above to where you start having to make some modifications uh, to your Jeep. Namely, uh, this uh, transfer case side Rezeppa joint. The problem is that when you start lifting your Jeep, you start increasing not only the suspension down travel, but also how much this joint right here uh, how much articulation this has because as the suspension articulates this drive shaft starts to move down with the suspension and you're putting quite a bit of strain on this factory joint right here this is the factory joint i googled what's the operating angle of this factory joint and what i'm hearing is about 14 degrees and 14 degrees really doesn't sound like a whole lot and for mildly lifted vehicles shorter lifted vehicles that's really not too much of a problem but when you get higher that's where it becomes a problem so i'm going to try to make this as scientific as i can and show you what that maximum rezippa joint angle of 14 to 15 degrees looks like so bear with me what I'm attempting to simulate here is a lifted Jeep, for example, with a drive shaft and Rezeppa joint that's maxed out at 14 degrees. So the drive shaft there is at 14, 14 degrees. I'm gonna center this Rezeppa joint at zero. You'll just have to trust me, that's at zero degrees. And have a look at that joint. So you can tell the angle of that drive shaft in relationship to the joint there. Look at the boot. You can kind of see the angle that it's at right there. That's maximum. That's what the that's what I'm hearing is a maximum operating angle of this Rezeppa joint. If you've got any more down travel than that, that joint, specifically that boot and joint, aren't going to last long. All right, so what I'm talking about specifically is that joint and that boot aren't going to last long is have a look at this, this factory joint here. You can kind of see how this flange is 90 degrees to the joint right well that doesn't leave a whole lot of operating angle between the shaft of the drive shaft and this rubber boot if this rubber boot in here tears the grease that's inside will leak out or become contaminated with water and grime and dirt and what have you it'll get inside that joint and it's going to wear it out so here's one of those factory Rezeppa joints i took it off the end of a drive shaft to show it to you but uh, you can see that boot there and this boot is actually in pretty good shape there's no there's no damage to this joint. I don't have any uh, reason to believe that this joint isn't in uh, pretty decent shape. But as that boot wears out and there's a hole in it and all the contents inside this joint are contaminated with water and sand and all kinds of nastiness, that's going to wear out this joint. This is the Rezeppa joint. So it's like a CV joint, 
uh, similar to front wheel drive cars. Um, but when that boot tears, this joint isn't gonna last long. Now the, the key problem with this factory joint is that it doesn't have much way of articulation between the boot and this flange here. This flange, which is 90 degrees to that joint, the, the front face of the joint, uh, at extreme operating angles, that boot's gonna tear. And there is a solution. So TerraFlex sells what they call their high angle Rezepa joint. It's a brand new joint that you get straight out of the package. New boot, new everything, new contents. But the difference is this flange here is not 90 degrees to the front face of the joint. It's actually much wider like this. So that's going to allow more articulation of the drive shaft to the joint, which can save the boot. However, nothing lasts forever. And you can see that that boot right there has a tear in it. This joint isn't gonna solve all your problems, obviously. This one still had a torn boot, but this one had a lot of use as well. This boot, or this joint, took me on the Rubicon Trail and all the moderate and hard trails that I've driven around in the area here. But again, it's not the golden uh, bullet. It's not gonna solve all your problems. Um, one of the other solutions to this problem is actually to replace this drive shaft and to get something that actually has two carden joints, either a carden joint down there or a double carden joint down here, often called a CB joint, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But the other issues with these drive shafts is that because the diameter of these shafts is so much bigger, that often these drive shafts, when they articulate down, are going to make contact with the um, exhaust, the crossover pipe that goes underneath this here. The solution to that is exhaust spacer kits which lowers the exhaust down away from the drive shaft so the drive shaft's not going to touch that or replacing the drive shaft now this is the rear drive shaft that came out of chewy and as i was saying before there's a rosepa on both sides one over here and one over there now on the back as compared to the front the drive shaft isn't as at as an extreme angle as the front one is. And so you don't necessarily have to worry about that extreme angle we talked about on the farthest joint here for the rear. You can, those joints are replaceable on the front. When I talked to the TerraFlex guy, he confirmed it. You could buy that high clearance Rosepa joint and you could put one on either end of your drive shaft. They're not cheap, it's 150 bucks for that joint. And um, I don't really know that this drive shaft is really all that bad. I mean, as I was saying before with the front, if you have a stock vehicle or a minimally lifted vehicle, these drive shafts should last you. They should last you until they don't last you. And what I mean by that is the boot tears or you take physical damage to it or it's no longer in balance. And I don't know that I would spend a ton of money on one of these joints to fix it. As I was saying before, these drive shafts really aren't that bad, except those hammer marks right there. You can see those hammer marks. Those hammer marks go all the way around this drive shaft. And I point those hammer marks out because they illustrate something that you shouldn't do. All right, so this is the rear pinion yoke on a JK. Okay, it goes on the rear differential. The joint slides into this pinion yoke, okay? And then you have all these bolts here that bolt the two of them together so it stays together. Somebody removed this rear drive shaft with a hammer. And that's why I point out, pointed out all these hammer marks earlier. These hammer marks go all the way around, okay? That's not the way you do it. When the two of these are together, you use these holes here and here, right there, and a punch and a hammer to remove the drive shaft from back to front, not from beating on the end of the tube here. It was vibrating like crazy after somebody removed that with a hammer. It started vibrating like crazy. My hypothesis is that when this was beaten with a hammer, it changed the balance of this drive shaft. At the time, there was absolutely nothing wrong with this drive shaft. Joints were good, boots were good. The boots are still good on this drive shaft, actually. Uh, but it started vibrating. 
do not use a hammer to remove your drive shaft. Please don't do that. All right, so why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this because in my opinion, it's only my opinion, there is nothing wrong with these drive shafts until there is something wrong with these drive shafts. And what I mean by that is if a boot tears, this boot tears, the slip yoke gets sloppy, one of these joints wear out, you take some physical damage and you knock a weight off, or in any way, shape or form, this drive shaft is damaged, then you should consider a replacement. I lifted Chewy and I ran with these joints, with these drive shafts, this one and this one for almost 70,000 miles, lifted three and a half inches of lift on 35s on the Rubicon and everywhere else I went and never had a problem. I had to replace these drive shafts, number one, because the rear drive shaft, again, I'm, I'm speculating, was no longer in balance. I ended up replacing them and there are two places, two places only that I would buy drive shafts. Adams and Tom Woods. I used Tom Woods before when I built my Grand Cherokee. Tom Woods built kick-ass drive shafts for the Grand Cherokee. They lasted forever, and I would highly recommend them. This time, I went with Adams. I bought Adams 1310 front and rear double carden drive shafts. See the double carden right there? These are solid U-joints. There are no grease zerks in here which argu arguably makes the U-joint stronger. So I like sharing my experiences with all of you guys. And uh, again, you know, my opinions on the drive shafts are just that, they're opinions and you know what they say about opinions. I didn't have $1,400 to dump into drive shafts when I first built Chewy. And so for me, I had to make these factory drive shafts last just a little bit longer. And I managed to make them last for 70,000 miles. But then again, I replaced them when they needed to be replaced. Some people are gonna be able to afford to do the drive shafts right away, and if that's you, that's fine, great. I'm, I'm happy for you. If you can't, just know that you can make these drive shafts last. You, you can make them last and still go out and have a lot of fun. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. Check out Tom Woods and Adams for drive shafts for your Jeeps. I hope you found this useful. If you did find this useful, please consider a like comment, or a share. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. I'll see you again next time.